Welcome back. Now, before we move on to something else, I'd like to quickly touch upon dynamic imports and how that might affect your bundle. So let's do this. I'm going to visit my webpack.mix file. And here we are compiling JavaScript. We're activating a view. We're compiling some post CSS. We're versioning our assets. But I'm also going to add this extract call. And what this does by default is it automatically extracts any common dependencies from your node modules directory into their own file. And that way you could have a single vendor JavaScript file that can be cached for a long time. But then your main app JavaScript that might be a little more volatile, well, that can constantly be refreshed without forcing the end user to pay the penalty of re-downloading all of that vendor JavaScript code. You separate them. And again, we call this simple vendor extraction. Now, take a look at this. If I were to compile everything down, you'll see that I now have an app.js file. That's our application code. But then I also have two more JavaScript files. One is your Webpack manifest file, and then the other is your vendor JavaScript code. And again, have a look how big this is. Now, granted, we haven't compiled for production, which will drastically bring that size down. But nonetheless, you can see how useful it is to extract this vendor code into its own file. OK, so the first step is when we add that extract method, all of your code is going to break until you update your script imports or references. So let's do that now. I'll visit app.blade, and we'll duplicate this to pull in those other two files, manifest and the vendor code. And that should do it. So if I switch back to Firefox and we give this a refresh, there we go. OK, so standard vendor extraction is useful. But now, have a look at this. If we go into my app.js file, here, like we discussed in the last episode, we're performing a standard common JS require, which means all of that code from the page component is being included with your standard app bundle. And in fact, why don't we play around with that? And yeah, why don't we look for, how about just this tag right here, text3xl. Let's see if we can find that in our app code. JS app text 3xl. And sure enough, we can find that, again, your page component code is stored within your app.js bundle. And you know what? For, for lots of projects, I think that's probably the way to go. But as your application grows, you might find that it's useful to dynamically import these page components as they are requested on the fly. OK, so here's how we might do that. Let's go back into app.js, and I'm going to return this to a dynamic import. But yeah, as we discussed, that returns a promise, which means I can't call default off of a promise. I have to wait for that to resolve. So what we could do is make this uh, an asynchronous function, and then I can say, oh, wait for this import to complete. And only after that's done do I want to grab that default property off of it. So now it's a subtle change, but I want you to notice something. Notice the assets from our previous compile. Now, if I run it again, it's going to look different. So yes, you have your app and vendor code, but notice you have these three new files. And notice each one represents a single page on your site. These can now be dynamically requested only when you visit that particular page. Have a look. I'm going to come back to Firefox, give it a refresh. It still works. But then if I pull up the Network tab, I only want to take a look at JavaScript requests. OK, so let's go to how about users and have a look there. Only when I requested that page did we make a request to fetch the necessary data. Now again, for really small projects like this, honestly, the, the benefit is negligible. But as your application grows, you can imagine situations where certain page components have a bunch of their own dependencies that are needed to make things work. And those could be fairly heavy dependencies. Well, in those cases, it's a shame to make the user download all of that code, especially if they may never even visit the page that uses it. So now, pretty easily with this small change, we're able to pull in all of those dependencies only when you request the corresponding page. So once again, if I go to my home page, then we will request the home JavaScript file. So yeah, this is absolutely something to be aware of. And you'll need to decide for your own projects, is that something that would be beneficial? 
Or would it be easier to turn off vendor extraction and create a single JavaScript file that you can cache for a really long time? And there is no right or wrong answer here. It really just depends on what you're building and how big it is.